I'm here today, men, to teach you how to become a better husband to your wife. We got people telling you that it's okay to be a swinger. We got people telling you it's okay, you should have threesomes with your wife. We have all these lies from the force of average telling us that everything we want is on the other end of our sexual desire. Now, first of all, we gotta understand that I'm not here as Ryan Stuman saying that I am the perfect husband or the perfect man or a perfect specimen of anything. I'm a flawed human being just like you, but I'm taking action every day to become the husband that I don't see out there in the wild. You wanna know how to be a better husband for your wife? I'm about to give you the game here because here's what I know. There's a lot of people out there thinking how they can get their wife to be a better wife for them. Man, I wish my wife was better. I wish my wife was better. Heads up guys, your wife is a reflection of you. If she's unhappy, it's because you're making her unhappy. If she's cheating, it's because you made her cheat. A wife, our spouse, and I don't care, ladies, y'all can get in the comments down here and feel free to roast me and tell me that you're independent, strong and fine and all that other stuff, that's great. But the truth is when God created man, he created us first and he created woman as a helper. God said man should not be alone by himself. This is not good. He created woman out of our rib. He pulled the best part from us, created woman with it. My pastor, Keith Kraft, he always says, and when Adam went to sleep and God removed his rib and he created Eve, and when Adam awoke from his deep sleep, he went, whoa, man. And that's where woman comes from. So if you walk into the room and your wife doesn't make you go, whoa, man, it's your fault because she's your helper. And just like if I'm a, a boss of a company and my sales team isn't doing any good, it's my fault because they're my helpers. If I run a company, my operations team is slipping, it's my fault because they're my helpers. So first, if you wanna become a better husband to your wife, you have to realize that everything rises and falls on leadership and men, no matter what she tells you, no matter what society tells you, because society will lie to you, you're the leader. They don't ask you who the woman of the house is, do they? They ask you who the man of the house is. They don't ask permission to marry your daughter from the mother, they ask from the father. You understand what I'm saying here? So if you wanna become a better husband, first of all, you gotta realize that she doesn't become a better wife until you become a better husband. If I come home every night, guys, I've lived this, okay? Mrs. Closer, before she was Mrs. Closer, was my girlfriend that we lived together, and I was scared to death to get married. I've been divorced before. I'll just be honest with you guys. Been divorced before, scared to get married, scared my heart was gonna get broke, scared she was gonna abandon me just like everybody else. So I'd start shit to run Amy off for years. Thank God she never left. Thank God she never left. But then, Amy would be in a bad mood. It's a reflection of me. Amy would be frustrated, anxious, because she's worried about me leaving. It's, it's a reflection of me. She'd be stressed to the gills because she's like, man, does this dude love me? Is he hate me? Is he leaving? Is he staying? I don't know what's going on. So she is in a state of emergency because she's a reflection of my actions. In 2019, something life-changing happened to me. I was ejected from an ATV while drinking, landed on my head, broke my neck in two places in my arm. And you know what? I wasn't drunk. I'd only had three drinks. That's all it took that day. I had to be care flighted from Catula, Texas to San Antonio, Texas. They operated on me in a, an army base because we were on government lands. Long story, another video. And when I woke up, my friends weren't there. My old family that adopted me wasn't there. My employees weren't there. It was my wife that got on that plane, rented that car, and got her ass there as soon as she could. I realized at that moment, if that woman for all those years that I threatened to leave, she could have just said, this is the time I'm getting out of here. This motherfucker's about to be paralyzed. He ain't gonna be no good to me anymore. He ain't gonna make no money. I just fucking leave him alone. She could have packed up and left. She'd have had the right to. But when she showed up down there, it was a sign from God to me that this woman is the woman that I've dreamed about my whole life. I wrote a piece of paper explaining what my dream spouse would look like, explaining Amy months and months and months before I even knew that she existed, before I knew her, before I met her, before I ran into her. And I had worked my entire life to find this person and I was about to fuck it up. About to fuck it up like, she better get her shit together. Fuck around with me. I'm a millionaire. I'm the man. I make money. I run shit. I'm a fucking boss. That's the shit that was in my head. It's probably in yours too. But here's what I know. When she showed up, I rededicated my life to that woman. So how do I become a better husband? At nighttime, we do something called family huddle. I ask every one of my kids, what's your praise for the day? What are they happy about? What was the most exciting part of their day? Then I ask every one of my kids what their prayers. Then my wife finishes, and then I actually do mine last and pray for everybody. My wife and I, we have date night every Wednesday for nine years now. Last week was our nine year anniversary. Every Wednesday for nine years without fucking missing. If I'm gone on Wednesday, we doing date night on Thursday. Last week I was gone on Wednesday and Thursday, we did date night on Saturday. But it's non-negotiable. It doesn't have to be an extravagant date. It doesn't have to be a nighttime date. We don't have to stay out. My wife and I, we call it the AARP special. 
We show up about five o'clock to a restaurant. Here's the beautiful thing about five o'clock, nobody's in a restaurant. You go to a nice steakhouse on a date at five o'clock in the afternoon. On a Wednesday, it's empty. Top-notch service, it's just us. Nobody bothering us, have the time of our lives. We're at home with the kids by seven. Next thing, if you wanna become a better husband for your spouse, for your wife, you gotta go to church. You know, some of y'all don't want to hear that. And you're like, this motherfucker talking about church and cussing and everything else. Man, there's plenty of preachers and pastors that don't cuss. That ain't me. I'm real. If God knows my mouth, he knows my heart. I might as well let y'all know it too. But if we don't get centered in God first, then our marriage ain't going to matter. My, my friend, Pastor Keith Craft in Frisco, Texas, Elevate Life Church, he said when he met Sheila, his wife, for 43 years, his girlfriend for almost 50 years at this point, when he met Sheila... The first thing that he said to her when he decided to get serious with her is he drew a triangle. And in the triangle at the top, he wrote God. Right side, he wrote Keith. The left side, he wrote Sheila. He said, if I'll always do my best for God and you always do your best for God, then we'll always meet at the top. So when you have a God-centered relationship, then I'm not doing this for you. I'm doing this for God and you're the beneficiary of it. I'm doing this for my spot in heaven and you're the beneficiary of it. It makes it bigger than a marriage. I can get mad at Amy Stuman and want to leave her or want to hurt her or whatever the emotions that we have as men when a, when a wife says some shit that's true and cuts us to the fucking bone. But I know that's not God's plan for us. God's plan is for her correction to give me the direction to be a better man of God, a better husband and a better father to our kids. So if you want to be a better husband to your spouse, it's up to you to be a better husband. It's not up to your spouse or your wife to become better at their job. They're just a reflection of the job you're doing. Men, it's time to step up and lead our families. The force of average is attacking our families, our lives, our religion, our way of being. They're trying to break down the moral fabric that this country and this planet was built on, and you can't let it. So I'm calling you today to make a dedication. Go into the comments and say, I'm rededicating myself to my wife today. Let us know, put it out there, be accountable, make it public, and then go do the work. Date night, church, be a man of God for your family. Rise above. Oh, 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 oh,